Flash games are great. Sometimes. Fan games are also great. Sometimes. So, of course, when you put them together, you get a mixed bag full of awful bootlegs shambled together to cash in on the popularity of any given series. You've got classics like Mario Bus, Mario Cooking Noodle, and who could forget Super Mario Shoot Zombies? As much of a bad reputation Flash games of Mario, Sonic, Pokemon, etc. get, believe it or not, there are actually good Flash fan games out there, made out of love for the series they're based on. The series in question today is, of course, Mario. As a kid, I was a huge Mario fan, and still am today, so I played a ton of Mario Flash games back in the day. I even had this toolbar on my old Windows XP computer which had 50 Mario Flash games and 50 Sonic Flash games, which I'm pretty sure came with a bunch of viruses, but it sure was cool. The three Mario Flash games I played the most, and really the only three I still remember today, were Super Mario Flash, Super Mario Flash 2, and Super Mario 63. I'll get to 63 some other day, because yeah, you read the title, this video is about these two. Super Mario Flash, aka That's Not Run 3, was made by this person, whose username I refuse to try to pronounce, and was released in 2007. The game, like most Flash games, is available to play on countless different websites, but for this review, I'll be playing on the creator's official website. So, where do Super Mario Flash and its sequel fall on the Flash fan game spectrum, and how do they hold up today? There's only one way to find out. Here's the title screen. Option contains your typical Flash game settings, such as quality and sound, but also the ability to change Mario's name for some reason? Info is pretty much just a credit screen, which is a surprisingly and sadly rare addition in a Flash game. When you play the one-player game, you'll have the option to do so as either Mario or Luigi, but they control exactly the same. I'll just be referring to the player as Mario from this point forward. The first thing you'll notice upon starting is that all of this game's sprites and music are ripped directly from Super Mario All-Stars and Super Mario World, mostly from the remake of the original Super Mario Bros, albeit compressed and lower quality. And yeah, that's really what these games try to be, Flash versions of the classic 2D Mario games. It's almost as if the developer got a hold of the assets from Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World and said, yeah, we can make a Flash game out of this. There's no story told in-game, but the game's description states that the goal is to rescue the princess from the evil Bowser, yeah, of course it is. The gameplay needs no introduction. You run and jump across levels while stomping on enemies and collecting coins, get to the flagpole, die a lot because this game is really hard for some reason, and save the princess, yay! Super Mario Flash has a whopping 10 levels, laid out on a world map based on Mario 3. The levels aren't just copies of old levels either, they're original layouts. The level designs are definitely not as well refined as the official games, but props for originality. Now on to controls. Left and right arrow keys move Mario left and right. If you have the fire flower, you can shoot fireballs with the space bar, and up is jump. Up being the jump button sounds like it would be really irritating, but honestly it just isn't, and I think that might have to do with the fact that there's no run button. Mario walks at a pretty much constant speed no matter what. Speaking of jumping and restrictive controls, you know how in every Mario game ever, or most platformers in general, you can hold the jump button for longer to make the character jump higher? Yeah, well that's not a thing here! Mario jumps at the same height every time you press jump. These controls definitely took time to get used to, and led to a ton of deaths I felt weren't my fault. Speaking of that, yeah, I really struggled with this game. There's nothing super unfair in these levels, but there are so many little design flaws that add up to a really annoying experience. Level 2 is really hard for a level 2, especially these platforms. In the first castle, there's a part where you have to ride these platforms that stop if you jump off them, and there's lava bubbles, and these give you no time to rest. As soon as they land back in the lava, they instantly go up again. The invincibility frames are way too short. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be seeing level 9 in my nightmares. Hammer Bros are just as awful as ever, and not even the world map is safe from aggravating design. When you die, instead of being booted back to the level you're attempting, you're sent back to the last level you completed. So if you're too quick with pressing the button, you could end up in a level you've already beaten. And there's no way to exit a level once you're in it, meaning that you could potentially lose even more lives on a level you've already done. On top of this, the fact that you're booted back to the last level you finished when you die means that you could be sent from the final Bowser Castle all the way back to the secret shop if you were last in there. And the fact that there are a bunch of unnecessary long pipe tunnels to go through makes this even worse. Seriously, look how long it takes to get from the final castle to the secret shop.
You start with five lives, and if you get a game over, it's back to the start. No continues, no saves. Not helping with this is the fact that there are no one-up mushrooms, and reaching the top of the flagpole doesn't do anything either. There are only two ways to get an extra life. Collect 100 coins, or the secret shop. This opens after you beat the first castle. Here, you can exchange 10,000 points for an extra life. Yeah, points actually do something in this game, something that can't be said for the official games. After way too many heated gamer moments to count, I gave up. On top of just being frustrated, I didn't feel the need to actually complete this game. I feel I got the full experience even without finishing it. All you get for beating the game anyway is Peach telling you how to open the cheats menu. You don't need to beat the game to unlock the cheats, you could just look it up, but even with the cheats I couldn't beat it. I know I sound like a complete loser for that, and uh, yeah, I am. But the cheats are just extra lives and unlocking all the levels. Needless to say, I did not have the most pleasant experience with this mode. The bad controls and design make everything needlessly difficult. Anyway, what's that one mode on the title screen I haven't talked about yet? <gasps> yep, this is where all of my nostalgia for these games came from. Those five syllables right there instantly made me want a game as a kid. And apply that to my favorite game series? I was on board from the start. Of course, this was way before Super Mario Maker and its sequel gave everyone and their grandma access to Mario course making tools. And back then, Mario fan level creation was mostly restricted to difficult to learn ROM editors. This game was my first exposure to a Mario level editor, and I fell in love with it immediately. And looking back on this editor, while it is limited, it's actually not that bad. First, you select the background for the main area and bonus area, as well as the length for them. There are even backgrounds not used in the main story, like Ghost House and Snow. Most everything is controlled with the mouse, and placing objects is really simple. Left click places if there's nothing there, and deletes if there is something there. Left and right arrow keys pan through the course, and up and down opens and closes the assets menu. The course parts are divided into four categories. Tiles, spelled with a Y for some reason. Objects, which contains coins, platforms, and nope. Monsters, self-explanatory, and warp points, which allow you to set warps for pipes and doors. You can also switch between the main and bonus zones here, and there's also the save feature, which surprisingly enough isn't just a save feature, as this is also where you set your level's music, name, start point, and goal pole. Yeah, you can actually make your levels end! Take that, Duck Life 2! The editor is perfectly fine to use, and works pretty well, but I do have some gripes with it. For one, placing tiles just takes way too long. I wish you could just click and drag to place multiple, but nope, you're stuck to just one tile at a time. There's no way to extend your level's length or change the background after you start it, which is frustrating. Also, I wish this line of ground tiles wasn't there automatically. It's tedious to delete it all if you want to start completely from scratch. Levels are saved through codes, of course, so if you want to save your levels, remember to copy the code and plop it into a text document. Sure, it's nothing special today, but for a Flash game from its time, the level editor is great, and was really the only reason I kept coming back to these games as a kid. There's even a level portal on the creator's website with a ton of level codes uploaded by other users. So let's check out some of these levels. Yeah, I, I, I really should have saw that one coming. So that's Super Mario Flash. It's really trying to be classic 2D Mario, and succeeds at that in some regards, but this game's flaws and overall quality just scream 2007 Flash game. I mean, it's nothing that'll make you scream, THIS GAME SUCKS! But it'll make you think, yep, this is definitely a Flash fan game from 2007. And also, why is this game so hard? Super Mario Flash, and especially its level editor, was good for the time and for what it was trying to accomplish, but I don't really recommend playing it these days unless you have some sort of nostalgic connection with it. But that wasn't the end of the Super Mario Flash story. Obviously, the first game was a huge hit, so a sequel was made, fittingly titled Super Mario Flash 2. Released in 2011, Flash 2 is heavily based on Super Mario World, as most graphics and music are lifted directly from it. 
Upon starting the one player game, you'll notice that Luigi has been axed, which is kinda lame, but he wasn't any different anyway. There's a new world map, which is actually improved compared to the first game. You are now booted back to the level you were attempting when you die, as it should be. There's no more unnecessarily long pipe tunnels to go through, and there are even some secret exits that lead to Switch Palaces, functioning exactly like they did in World. Although the secret exits are pretty difficult to find, they are rewarding as the Switch blocks make some levels easier. Mario, disappointing it controls and feels exactly like he does in the first game. That means no run button, same jump height every time, and up being jump. He does have a few more moves though, such as being able to swim and slide down slopes, behaving exactly how you'd expect, and also the ability to pick up and carry items like P-switches, springs, and Koopa shells, which is done by holding the X key. Many other features from Super Mario World have been added here, one of which being Yoshi. Yoshi works pretty much exactly like he does in World, and you can even bring him with you into castles and ghost houses. That's probably illegal in certain places. The Cape Feather has been added, in addition to the Mushroom, Fire Flower, and Star returning from the first game. If you hold X after walking for a bit, then jump, you can start flying, just like in World, but... worse. I don't know how to describe it, just look at the footage. Speaking of power-ups, the item reserve box from World is here, which can be used by pressing the space bar. But only when you're small Mario, and without Yoshi. I guess this is because space bar is also used for fireballs and Yoshi's tongue, but the reserve box should have just been mapped to a different button. There are many other new features done in the first game. New enemies, slopes, water, auto-scrolling, water, and auto-scrolling, and levels that can now be taller than one screen. Now one of my complaints with the first game was how unfairly difficult it was sometimes. So is the sequel any better? <laughs> Not really. There's still no save feature, which is really, really stupid. Thankfully though, the game is about the same length as the first one, and it's easy to grind for lives by playing the first level over and over again. Grinding for lives should never be a necessity in any game, but just because of how difficult the last level is, and due to the lack of a much needed save feature, I kind of had to. There's still some of that classic Mario Flash unfair bad design, like level 5 starting you directly on top of a fish, there being no checkpoints in this slow underwater auto-scrolling level with a boss at the end, ghost houses, in general, the fact that levels can now be taller than one screen adds a whole new frustrating element. The camera. Sometimes the camera was too high for me to see where I was jumping, which led to many unfair deaths. They messed up the camera in a 2D platformer. Nice. You know what made this game a little more bearable though? Cheats! Hold C and H on the keyboard when starting a level, and you enter a room filled with power-ups and a level clear orb, allowing you to skip the level. This works pretty well as a makeshift save feature by skipping levels you've already completed on previous playthroughs. The final level is not fun or well designed in the slightest. Most of it is just trial and error. How was I supposed to see this swamp? How was I supposed to know where to go here? How was I supposed to get past these ouching, ouching saw, saw blades? blades? How was I supposed to know how quickly this platform sinks into the lava? And welcome back to everyone's favorite game show, Did Sean Beat Super Mario Flash 2? Where we ask one question and one question only. Did Sean beat Super Mario Flash 2? The answer is no. Flash 2's level editor is a lot like the main game. The same as the first games, but with more stuff. But unlike with the main game, the level editor didn't really need substantial improvements. Most of my issues with the first game's editor are still here. Always ground tiles at the bottom, only being able to play single tiles at a time. But again, the editor works perfectly well even with these problems. Like before, you start by selecting a background, but now you can upload a custom background. From my test, it seems the image has to be near the perfect dimensions or there will be a white border around it, but this feature is really fun to mess around with. After that, you select the width and height of your level. The editing controls are the same as the first games, except for spacebar being used to open the menu, since up now moves the camera up. There are tons more enemies, objects, and tiles, spelled correctly this time by the way, to use when compared to the first game. Certain objects even have multiple different behaviors chosen based on where they are placed. This definitely would be better if you could just choose the behavior instead of having it determined by location. Also, layers! The addition of layers greatly improves the editor, as it allows you to create decorative backdrops and place them behind the tiles. There are two layers, you can adjust which is the main layer, and they allow for more customization in your levels. 
There's even some features here I wish were in Mario Maker 2, like Charge and Chucks, Rexes, Placeable Water and Lava Tiles, Slanted Pipes and Semi-Solids, and this Sprite Generator object, which allows you to make Bullet Bills, Cheap Cheeps, or Super Koopas appear from random directions throughout the entire level. The level editor is a nice improvement compared to the first games, and even with its shortcomings, it was exceptional for a Flash game. And that's Super Mario Flash 2. It retains a majority of flaws its predecessor had, but I would still consider it good for a Flash game from its time, emphasis on that last part. It's just the first game again, but with more things. And that's it. The biggest issue with Flash 2 is that it doesn't really improve upon the original, it just adds more stuff. The controls and physics are the same, there's still no save feature, and the level design is still flawed. And there's nothing this game does that Super Mario World and Super Mario Maker 2 don't do better. Well, except this, maybe, and I know that this is a Flash game, and that's not a fair comparison, even if World came out over 20 years before Flash 2, but the entire time while playing this game, I was thinking, why aren't I playing Super Mario World? And yes, the answer to that is that this series is called Flash Game Reviews, not better than Mario 3 Game Reviews, but still. Super Mario Flash 2 is basically a poor man's Mario World, and that brings us to the greatest flaw of Super Mario Flash and its sequel, a lack of originality. So many fan games are great because of how they take a series we love and put a unique spin on it. Or at least play, look, and sound differently than the official games. Super Mario Flash and its sequel play it extremely safe, and because of that, they're too similar to official, much better Mario games, and there's no reason to play them when compared to the official games. That's one of the reasons I didn't feel the need to finish either of these games, they're just too similar to already existing games. Allow me to clarify that I don't hate these games. I find them to be fairly well made, I have them to thank for introducing me to Mario course creation, and they're definitely not shameless cash grabs on the success of the franchise, but there is really no reason to play them nowadays. Well, except for making a YouTube video over analyzing old Mario Flash games, I guess. Flash 2 is probably a better game than Flash 1, though not by much. They're kind of just the same game with a different coat of paint, and one happens to have more features, so I guess it's automatically better. Even if these games didn't hold up incredibly incredibly well, it was fun to look back on them for this video. You know what, scratch every good thing I just said about these games, you're going to.